first rule of Fight Club is you don't talk about. Oh, Jesus! Weakness. How you doing? We're back with another top five. This is our, our Christmas special. I got Zach and Roan here with me. Hi, I'm Zach and Roan. And uh, for the Christmas special, we're gonna be talking about David Fincher movies. Christmassy. I like it. First movie. Gone Girl. Gone Girl. I mean, you go see it because Ben Affleck's in it, he's got a beautiful face, but then you're watching it and you get to these scenes where blood is spilled everywhere and you're just like, what am I watching? This is like the most messed up thing ever. And that is what David Fincher's all about. Like, making these horribly messed up things, but you keep watching it because it's so interesting. When I saw it, I had like I didn't know what the end of the story was, and I just thought Ben Affleck's character, like, I would go back and forth between, oh, he did it, and oh, I have absolutely no idea. Like, the themes about this movie, it's kind of just about life, and, like, living this plain and normal life, and pretending like everything is okay. And also, just, like, their start of their relationship just seemed, like, so perfect at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then, just to, like, see it kind of mutate into like what it was at the end and like maybe just everything wasn't as perfect as yeah just the way that like people in the real world are always wearing these masks the next movie is the game also this big social critique of like looking at this guy that like thinks that he has the perfect life you know michael douglas michael douglas he's I... like a millionaire and he's he's has a great job he lives in a big mansion and like he thinks he has it all but then he gets invited to play the game, which says that it will give him everything that he needs in his life. And then it is just this crazy, insane roller coaster ride of just like, what the heck is going on? The whole movie, you just want to understand what the game is, but David Fincher does not <laughs> let you know until yeah. the very end. He goes through the game and his life is just torn apart and he just, in a very beautiful flow of his story, he ends up getting everything that his life needs. Next movie, <laughs> the girl with the dragon tattoo. It's just so, it's very slow in the beginning. There's not a lot like locking you in. It's just kind of James Bond <laughs> in a, um, like an isolated cabin in, in the winter, but it's a, such an intense mystery in the movie that once you get over that hump, it is totally worth it. I always forget what the girl's name is. Oh, I have no idea. I, it's on the tip of my tongue. But she's a, she's a very good actress. Her performance in that movie, she's just a, such a great character in the sense that she really embodies like the feminist movement of like women being able to like be independent on their own and taking control of themselves and. Like, she just has all these men around her that are trying to abuse her and take control of her, and she's just not about that shit. And she is able to beat the shit out of and take control of, like, everything in her situation. And, like, in the end of the movie, she is the hero saving Daniel Craig, who's, like, it's like the flipped of the damsel in the distress. So it's, in that, in that regard, it's very, like, powerful and important. Well, Zach, this next movie, I know that you have something to say about it. Tell me a little something about Seven. Seven? Just all the killings are brutal. It just It's really disturbing to look at. In that way, it's another movie where the most horrible things are happening on screen, but you cannot look away because you are so, like, emotionally and, like, intellectually provoked. And, like, you're just trying to think, like, why is he doing these things? And... It's just so disturbing, the whole movie, the entire thing. Like, it's really, like, a strong message about good and evil in the world. And, like, it provides, like, kind of a bit of an unsatisfying message that there's probably more evil than there is good in the world. I mean, we gotta mention Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey. What, he's only in, like, the last 15 minutes? Because there's, like, so much hype for him the whole time. Like, they're in his apartment seeing all this crazy in his room and then like seeing all the murders that he did yeah he's like he's not physically imposing but it's just like i would never want to meet this Ooh. guy just yes. from just how intimidating it yeah. is and just like how dead his eyes look yeah he, the he just dominates the whole situation let's move on the final movie on the top five 
One of my favorite films in the whole world, Fight Club. Fight Club. This movie changed my life for the best. Like, your whole world is filled with consumerism and you don't even know about it. That's what Fight Club's all about. And, and I love it. And I gotta say, it's just like, for people who felt just like some kind of like irrelevance in the world, or this is the movie for you, this is the match to like, just kind of ignite just how angry you are. Brad Pitt, Tyler Durden, one of the freaking greatest characters in any movie ever. He's so freaking wild, and Fight Club, like, on such a surface level, is so, like, cool. Like, dude, just find each other, all this is awesome. But then, on the deeper level, it's just all about just, like, wanting more from your life than just the bland 9 to 5. Mm -hmm. And there's just one scene in particular in that movie where it just, like, hits you in the face that, like, stop accepting, like, this dull existence like you can do more with your life you can go out and like try to achieve your dreams like maybe it won't happen for you but going out and working towards it is better than sitting here working at a grocery store and exactly. that scene like it just gives you chills it makes you want to go out and do more and at the end of the day that's the greatest thing a movie can do it makes you want to get off the couch and stop watching movies yeah. <laughs> But we don't. We just keep we watching. We don't. We love movies. We, love we movies. always will. And uh, things we, we buy things we don't want with money, money we, we don't, don't have to impress people we don't, don't like. And that's what a great the line. God's honest truth. Yeah. So that's it for the top five David Fincher movies. But if that's not good enough, here's another five, real quick, just to give you something else to watch. First, we got Zodiac, which Zodiac. is just an intense crime thriller movie star-filled cast totally gruesome you want to look away but you can't next we got the social network the impressive thing about the movie is that it's a movie about how facebook got started how can that be entertaining yeah but it is and then we got benjamin button a very strange sort of story and that's something that i feel david fincher works well in just an an abstract sort mm. of st storytelling. The next, we got a TV show on Netflix, and the characters have a very unique sort of relationship that they work with. And then, of course, just seeing all the psych the psychopaths is like what you go to see, and that is it's very satisfying. And then the next movie uh, is a movie Panic Room. It's not not the best film by David Fincher. Not the greatest. Oh, Raul. Raul made and broke this <laughs> film. Who's <laughs> uh? The worst character, but he was the best character. He was fun to watch because he was so stupid. Douche pickle. <laughs> I hate freaking Raul. <laughs> Raul. There's really only one other David Fincher movie that I know of, and it's not on either list because it's like the worst movie I've ever seen. <laughs> and it's Alien 3. David Fincher made a comment that no one dislikes this movie more than him. <laughs> I think we've covered, we've covered the it. top five and another top five. You got some great list of David Fincher movies that you should check out. I, From the bottom of my heart, you can watch most of these movies. Don't watch <laughs> Panic Room, Dude, right. and uh, hopefully hopefully you enjoy them. Leave a comment. Tell me what, what I should do next for the top five, and tell me what you thought about the top five David Fincher. If you hated them, let me know. If you liked them, thanks. Um, yeah, that's it. I'll see you next time. Bye.